everybody, it's Drew, aka The Board Review. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use uh, Autodesk Inventor. Uh, I'm going to also be showing you how to create something like this here. With these raised letters and stuff. And I'm going to try and keep this as a fairly short video. So, what you want to start out by is creating a standard IPT new part. <coughs> I have some different ones down here. These are for school project. Uh, here's the cube itself of everything and then here's the individual parts so go ahead and go to part two that's brand new and now uh, I'm on the 2016 student version I don't know if you can see that up here uh, nope there's nowhere that it says it so yeah so you're gonna come up here you're gonna hit start 2d sketch and most people do it on the XY plane uh, I do it on the YZ because it's flat so, either way, whatever. So, like I said, you can use the rectangle, but the rectangle just never wants to work. So, let's say that I want to do, you know, say something like, if I zoom out, and I need to go out to, oh, I don't know, here. We'll make that. <coughs> and you can also do something like that if you do... I didn't make that straight line. Go ahead and delete. Gonna hit line. That'll actually already be selected whenever you open the 2D sketch. Uh, so then you'll get your line up there at the top when you can connect over. And once you learn how to use Inventor, it's very, very simple to use. So as you can see, I have two basic shapes. If you need to, you can dimension these. Go out here, you can say 1.5. There's your difference in dimension. So we'll go ahead and go to 3D model up here. Click extrude. And as you can see, if we click that, that one pops up. If we click that, that one pops up. So if we back up, then we can extrude just this one. So if we go 0 or 0 0.025, and we zoom in really, really well, As you can see, we have this part. Sometimes it wants to be funky with the way that it does things, but... <coughs> and it gives you an arrow indicating where you're going. So, you can also change this to cut. Uh, we'll go ahead and select this. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and do this. Um... So here we'll do 0 0.07, 0 0.01 makes it very small, 0 0.09 makes it kind of thick. So let's do 0 0.05. There is our block, or a ribbon, or whatever. So we're going to do another 2D sketch. When it highlights this, we're going to collect, or not collect, select the uh, the front face and then it's going to bring you to your top view now I, I want to do this the other way so I'm going to turn it so that I can see the whole thing then if you want to uh, add text zoom in here we're going to create our text box and to do that mo motion of moving it across hold down your scroll wheel Then we're going to type in what we want. Good lord. Okay. So then we want to have this stretch percent 100. Click OK. And like I was going to guarantee, it would have it um, going down. So that's a normal problem we can go to rotate up here select click the text and now we can freely rotate what we need to so we'll go ahead and make it like that now as you can see it's down here well we don't want it down there so we'll click move select it one more time base input and that will take us up here 
I just have to go a little farther. <clears throat> oh, I hate when this happens. Okay, then we're going to say move this. Ah, there it goes. And we're going to click at it one more time. Base point. Move. And we want to get this out of the way by holding down the scroll wheel. Uh, just try and get it equal, whatever. Click done. Now we got that there. All right, so then we want to go to extrude one more time. Now that is a 2D sketch all by itself. As you can see over here, sketch two. This keeps track of everything you do, so... If you need to go back to something, do that. So then you select that profile, and as you can see, we have 0.05 as what we can extrude. If I drop this down, it says cut. That will take it into the material. So you can see here it's actually cut through the material. So if I were to take this and uh, have it 3D printed like I probably will after I get this done, it's going to have some... Uh, minor defects to it. Go ahead and back up there, like I said, and we'll hit extrude again. Uh, you can do intersect, which really does nothing uh, for this part that I'm... Th join actually is what is extruding. Uh, so if you go to cut, and you don't want to cut it, and you can't find extrude, just join. That's the one that it is. So let's do 0. Point, or point zero two five. That's what that's going to look like. 3.5. Come on, 4. There we go. I know it's not much of a difference, but it looks good. Alright, so as you can see, we have our letters raised up. The Blue Review, YouTube 2016. Go ahead and hit the home button. I'll give you a nice little view of it there. Alright, we'll change our material here. Uh, you can change it to glass. Uh, that actually is better looking than what I use, uh, or what I end up getting. Uh, it's just horrible. Okay, carbon fiber, where's that at? Oh, it's up. Carbon fiber used to be in here. Uh, ABS plastic, here, this is what, uh, well, that's what it looks like anyway. <laughs> so, you need to go through here. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of different things. Uh, here's walnut, wood, actually looks pretty good. Maple. Birch. Birch actually looks kind of cool. I mean, just as a... Yeah, alright, whatever. So let's go ahead and change our color now. As you can see here, we've got all these blah, blah, blah. Carbon fiber is actually the color scheme. So as you can see, there's all the different carbon fiber. Whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and do carbon fiber 1. And then that just changes it. So let's make this thing clear blue. And I hope that doesn't... Yeah, it does. Crap. I know it says clear, but I would have thought it wouldn't. Okay, that's cyan. So now this is all one piece. Let's go ahead and top. We'll zoom in. Move it over the way we need to. Ah! Change the color of this to white by just simply clicking where the letters aren't, but selecting sketch. No, I don't want to change you. There's white. Ah, that worked. Alright, we'll change this back to cyan before I miss it. Where did it go? I missed it. I have not. What the heck? And as you can see there. Now we have uh, the back, traditional color, the front cyan, and my letter's white. So now you guys are looking at this going, well, why, why does it look like this? Okay, well, so we want to zoom back in, get really, really close so we can see every individual letter, and then we're going to highlight in here. 
we're going to make this, this has to change to cyan because then it just makes it look white and it makes it look like one big thing. And this can be a tedious process, but it's either, I mean, because I don't think there's a command that you can do this with everything yet. I haven't found one. So here we'll keep doing this. I know this, you guys are like, ah, but. want to make sure the whole thing's white, not just one edge. Oh, there, there's your effective way there. Go up and just type. And hit enter. So much faster. Oop, I didn't mean to click BIM. the 3D model. Oh, see, I got an edge there. We want to make sure you don't get an edge. <coughs> okay. So now, there's everything. It's white. It's embossed. It's on a blue background. So now, what do we do now? Okay, well, three. Or wh whatever. I don't even know. All right, so we're going to start from over here. And I want to start a line from about... Okay, I'm sorry. That did not work. So we want to start a line from the edge of this, 0 0.05. Uh, excuse you. Sometimes it doesn't like to get the points exact, and it just, like, craps itself. So let's get zoomed in even farther, I guess. Line that... Point zero five. There's your distance. So we want to start one there. Okay. So then if we go cancel, you can move back over here. And you can move from the edge of your six. The far edge of your six, sorry. Point zero five. Draw a line down. Okay, so then you can cancel. Then you can delete the middle line, delete the dimension. No one needs to bother with that. Delete that. Now you want to delete your little, I don't understand. Nobody knows why those pop up, the little yellow lines, um, but they're there. So just get rid of them. So you want to go ahead and start, like I said, drawing your line. Draw it to the corner. Draw it down. Draw it over. 3D model extrude. Select that. Cut. Just click one because that I know that'll get rid of it. There you go. Uh, go to 3D model. Ah, crap. Okay, line, zoom in over here. Gosh, that's far. 0.05. And we want to draw our line down. Cancel. Delete that line. Okay. So as you can see, we end up with another one of the funky yellow lines. Just go ahead and delete that. So we'll go ahead and line one more time. Get it right above that. Over to the corner. Down. 
over one more time. And since I didn't make that big enough on the first try, you're going to end up with two uh, really random looking lines because they don't join with each other. That, so it extrudes as two different things. So you want to always make sure that your lines connect completely. There's no like joints between one line. So like I said, that one really doesn't make a difference uh, half the time. So we'll go ahead and cut do that and if you get out of whack you can just click the little home button so look at this everybody rotate please we've got half an inch on each side perfect equal spacing of everything all the letters are here so now here's what we can do now this is still birch wood this is still you know like I said the whole other side still looks white but anyway just so that this would be like this would be really really cool so you can save as, save copy as, I can go to uh, my drive, engineering, parts, and then I can do, wait, where did, what did I open this morning? Oh yeah. I'll, s I'll do my parts and we can open in here and add YouTube logo. So we're going to save. As you can see there, we will then save. Ah, uh, crap. Oh, export. I'm sorry. Export CAD format. Go here. We're going to change this from DWG files. Actually, I will save one of those because I have to open them here in a little bit. I'll do that here in just a second. Finish saving, please. Okay. Then we're going to go to export one more time, CAD format. Then we're going to change this down here to STL files. Now, if you guys know the name STL file, then you should know that means 3D printing. Save that back out. And now, I'm going to switch over. As you can see, I bring up OBS here. Or no, you can't, because all you're looking at is Inventor. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause this right here. Go ahead and activate my entire monitor capture so that you guys can see all of this. Hey okay, guys, so we're right where we left off here in Inventor with this part. So we'll go ahead and minimize this. As you can see, it comes with DWG TrueView. Now, DWG, obviously, I s you saw me save that file. Uh, deep always associate, sure, yeah, I don't care, whatever, open. So, recent documents, so we're going to go ahead and open a file, go, like I said, I'll select my drive, engineering, my parts, part two, this is the only, because there are the two files, but this is the only one that looks like a DWG file, so that's the only one it's going to get. All right. So this is where you can edit uh, all of the different lines and everything. Uh, 2D wireframe. Uh, you can change this shades of gray. So that will give you after I hit the home button that it doesn't want to look at the right way apparently. Uh, yeah. So there's that. So let's go ahead and we'll close that. Let's go ahead and open Cura from Ultimaker. Uh, uh, Ultimaker. This might take a little bit, but um, you know, you can use 3D Builder, whatever. I just have Cura here so that I can export these things into G codes just in case I need to. So we'll go ahead and we'll open a file. Go ahead and we'll go to Puzzle Cube. That is then we can backtrack into engineering my parts YouTube logo. Now this is the STL file. Look at this thing. Do you see how small this is? Look at this, but it actually puts it in here. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to say scale up. Add two zeros. No, not add two zeros.
17, 18. All right, 19 is the biggest we can get. We'll do 19 on each side. Looks pretty darn good. So then we want to go to rotate, and we want to make it. See, that just does it all the way around. We want this one. No, not that one. We want this one. So as you can see now, this, or it should be, is laying, uh, here we'll do a layer height. So this is actually laying on the build platform right now. And it only prints it in 19 layers, so, I mean, it's a small part. So it's going to take me eight minutes to print the dang thing. I mean, if I had a 3D printer, I'd shoot this thing off of it right now, but... Go ahead and load it back up again. We'll pop another one in. Delete all objects. All right. Let's go ahead and load. YouTube logo. Where are you? You didn't load, did you? No, you didn't. What? 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 Oh, shoot. I was on the thing. Yeah. Delete. Delete, scale by 19, then we want to rotate, <sighs> see that's a bad thing is these, the axis on this is just like utter death, so we want to lay it flat, 90 degrees, it's going to lay it flat, then we want to rotate it around so it prints without having to get real close to the edges there. So now if we scale up 0 0.8, 9, let's just go to 20. It's 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, how about 30? 33, 35, 36, all right, 35 is the limit. We'll go ahead and do 34. So as you can see, that makes it nice and pretty for us, and now it's going to take 43 minutes because it's so much bigger. And let's go ahead and do layer view. It's going to analyze everything, or initialize, whatever. So I didn't realize I said that. So that's when it finishes. Go all the way through here. So, you know, you can do layer height, uh, 0.2, sure. Shell thickness of, let's go ahead and bump that up to 4. Uh, fill density, we don't really need that, so we'll put that into 20. Uh, as you can see, that doesn't fill it up as much, so it turns it to 56. Let's go ahead and do 10, that's in percentages. So you can see that leaves still, uh, you know, we don't have anything here. Uh, like I said, we don't have anything. See, so you can do a brim, hold that down, but we don't have a 3D. I, like, I have access to a 3D printer, but I don't have one. So obviously I can't adjust the speed crap like that so that uh, that does that. So. so that is really... You've, okay, so see, as we go through our layers here, it only is putting these little supports in there. So the blue is the head of the um, actual printer. So as you can see, we go through here, it zoop, zip, zoop, zabity boop, around. And over here, when we get to the very top, it's going to pop off the side. There it is. And when that happens, it goes right up to the top goes back to where it needs to, and then we can do that. So let's go ahead and, oops. I don't know what it saved to. Oh, saved as I forward slash YouTube logo G code. Okay. So, like I said, you still have all the advanced settings. You have your speed, your nozzle size, your quality of your uh, material, everything. So now, 
we'll close this. Let's go ahead and open up our uh <clears throat> I don't know why I X'd out of that. Let's go ahead and open this. YouTube logo G code. I need to delete these. So what they are. Oh, I forgot. I know what that's for. Okay, well that was actually something from Steam. Uh, let's see, move for, to engineering my parts. And then I want to also create a new folder here. Ah, <laughs> not shortcut folder. 3D print. There we go. So here's the STL file that we want. Go ahead and uh, come on. Move to 3D printing. Uh, that's the logo itself. Here we'll move that to 3D printing. Or not the. I meant the. Uh, the uh, G codes. So there's the G code for a 3D printer. There's the STL file in case, because uh, we have a MakerBot uh, that we use. So, you know, that somewhat might be different. But anyway, so literally, that's 3D modeling. When someone says 3D modeling and you think of these big crazy things, I mean, yeah, this is a fairly simple thing to do. But you can still create, you know, say something. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Something that you would want to do here, I'll bring, like I said, I'll bring up this cube that we're doing. Uh, and this is actually fairly simple, too, once you learn how to do it. You go up to here, you go to Constrain. Here's Mating and Flushing. So you just mate the two faces together, and then that gets them in their rough orientation. Then you just flush the sides with the sides that you need, and bing, bang, boom, you got, like, say, the purple and the red. Mate these two faces together. It's going to get it kind of close. Flush this side with this side, this side with this side. You're done. So that is 3D modeling. So uh, as you can see, we... Went in from scratch, made something, converted it, put it into an STL file, and now it's ready to be printed off on a 3D printer and a physical object. So that is really, if you have an object that's pretty darn simple, how quick you can go from 3D printed object or from computer drawing to a 3D printed object. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave down in the comments some things you might want me to create. Uh, not something too insane but just something that would be pretty uh cool to see um if i can get it 3d printed but anyway thanks for watching remember to rate comment like subscribe we are one subscriber one subscriber away from 100 i'm so happy that we're getting close to 100 uh, we, well actually we've been close but this is the actual this is the final uh that one click from someone's mouse or finger on a touch screen is just all that we need so thank you guys so much and i'll talk to you guys next time